bless your mighty God. Come on, put your hands together for our praise and worship team. Hallelujah. Because we serve Almighty oh, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We serve a mighty God on this morning. The word of God declares that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And here to encourage us on this morning is our founder and pastor, a Words of Life minister of the Apostolic Faith, is none other than Elder Darian McKinnon. Somebody shout, preach the word! Preach the word. Hallelujah. Pastor McKinnon, in Jesus Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank God for being able to make it here to stand before you to speak his word on this day. Hallelujah. It's been an experience in the name of Jesus. But we have to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I give honor, of course, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you know, it, 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 it is just something to have a God that you can serve that'll talk back to you. Yeah. You know how many people serve a God that don't even speak to them? Woo! <laughs> we want a God that can't speak to you. My God, Amen. I thank God I serve a God that speaks to me, that cares about me, that yes. takes care of me, yes. that provides for yes. me, that protects me. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say praise the Lord unto my wife. Hallelujah, Hallelujah the first lady there. And I say praise the Lord to all you saints. Hallelujah. God bless you and thank you for coming out today. And I say praise the Lord unto all that are on Facebook and YouTube that we thank God for you. Hallelujah. So we're going to uh, go back into the scriptures from which we were in last week. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that scripture is Joshua. Hallelujah. Joshua 5 and 6. Joshua, that's much better. I put my glasses on. Thank you, Jesus. Joshua 5 and 6. And it reads in this way. For the children of Israel walked 40 years in the wilderness. To all the people that were, that were men of war, which came out of Egypt, were consumed. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Mm unto whom the Lord sworn that he would not show them the land which the Lord swore unto their fathers that he would give us a land that floweth with milk and honey. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask God that you would bless this morning. Father, that you would strengthen me to speak your word. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, you would give me clarity of thought, that you would give me clarity of speech, that you would touch, Father, the, the words as they, hallelujah, flow from my mouth and enter the ears and the heart of your people. Father, have a change to come about, Lord, in the name of Jesus, for those that need a change, strengthen those that need to be strengthened, God. Deliver those that need to be delivered, God. In the name of Jesus, Father, do your thing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You, you may be seated. Hallelujah. And this is, the title would be, A Desert Experience, and this is part two. Desert Experience, part two. Now, on last week, the desert experience, part one that we was uh, uh, that we spoke about, the children of Israel was in bondage, and they were delivered from their bondage of slavery in Egypt, which started uh, 
that started their journey to the promised land that flows with milk and honey, which the Lord God had promised them. Now, Exodus 15 and 22, it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. This often happens after a time of victory comes. We find ourselves in the middle of a test, in, in the middle of our desert experience. You know, you'd be like, man, I just was living it up. You know, I, I just got out of this. Now I'm in that. My God. You find yourself in a desert experience. But the Lord told them that he was going to lead and guide them to paradise. A place that floweth with milk and honey. But he didn't tell them what they must go through in order to get there. You must first have that desert experience before you make it into that paradise or into the promised land. The life, life itself is a desert experience. And you will go through some desert experiences before you transition into the promised land into, or into heaven. Now last week, we named out uh, just a few different things that, that, that could possibly be some desert experiences in people's lives. And we, we talked about prolonged sicknesses can be a desert experience. And uh, uh, when you move and you get to a new place and join a new church, those things could be desert experiences because you don't know anybody. Hallelujah. Being stuck in a, a miserable job, a boring job, instead of fulfilling your career desire. Hallelujah can be a desert experience. Rebellious children. Oh, desert experience. An unbelieving spouse can be a desert experience. And a mountain of debt surely can be a desert experience. A divorce from your spouse. Hallelujah can be a desert experience. And then we discussed about a misunderstanding could be a, desert, a misunderstanding of, uh, or by your spouse or by your pastor or, or by your friends or even by your family. Hallelujah. Could be a desert experience. Your rebellion or my rebellion or sin or, or disobedience unto God can lead you into a desert experience. Being unsaved Without Jesus is surely, hallelujah, a desert experience. Not knowing your purpose and your destiny is a desert experience. You'll find yourself going round and round looking for satisfaction and fulfillment. But until you get to the backside of the desert, you'll still be going round and round. You know, because on the backside of the desert, you can find some things. You can find Jesus. And you can find yourself on the backside of the desert. Satisfaction and fulfillment is only found in Jesus. And so is your purpose and your destiny is found in Jesus. In other words, you got to make some contact to Jesus in order to find out what your purpose and your destiny is. Amen. And those desert experiences that we go through, they lead us and, 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 and mold us and, and get us to where we need so that we can find out what our purpose and our destiny is. Amen? Amen. Before Moses was fit, for his ministry of leading the people of Israel out of Egypt, he had to go through his desert experience. Yeah, yeah. He found his purpose and his destiny on the backside of the desert. That's what the word of God said. He, on the backside of the desert. Yeah. 
That's where he found God. And that's where God showed up at that burning bush back on the backside of the desert. We discussed how the Bible told us in Numbers chapter 13 how, how God told Moses to send out the 12 spies to, uh, to do a reconnaissance mission and to check things out in the land of Canaan, the promised land. The land which the Lord had, uh, had promised the children of Israel that was flowing with milk and honey. Now, we know that 10 of the 12 spies brought back bad word or a bad report unto the children of Israel. They said that there were giants in the land and that we can't beat these giants. In other words, they're going to beat us up. And then they said that the land would eat us up. That the land, we ain't talking about the people, it said the land would eat us up. See, it was the, it, they said that the land eats up its inhabitants. Man, I don't know what they was looking at. My God, but then they said, we won't be able. We will not. We won't be able to defeat these people in this land. Hallelujah. You need to watch out the words that people bring to you and drop off, I said, at your front porch. Don't receive everything everybody is saying into your house or into your temple or into your heart. But it goes on to say, the word of God said that two of the spies, Caleb and Joshua, brought back a good report. Let us go up at once and take the land. We can do it with the help of the Lord. This is that good report that they brought back. This is the type of report that you need to hear in the midst of your desert experiences. A report that encourages you, gives you hope, and drives you forward across the desert. Hallelujah. And it lets you know that, that your desert experience only lasts for a moment. But joy and deliverance come in the morning. These are the men that you need around you during your desert experience. These are the type of people that you need around you in your desert experience. You need someone that's going to encourage you and, and keep you encouraged. You need someone beside you, hallelujah, with you that believe like you believe. That believes God is going to do just what God said he's going to do, which is take us into the promised land. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You need someone beside you that sees things like you see things. <coughs> Hallelujah. Even when there's giants standing in the way, yeah. Yeah. you need somebody that say, we can walk across that giant. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need somebody that's, that, that's with you that says, yeah. we can knock that giant over. Yeah. Yeah. We can knock him out. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Somebody that says that we can cross that mountain. Yeah. Hallelujah. You need somebody with you that says, we can do this. We can do this. You don't need help that says, uh, we need to turn around and go back. That's not the help that you need. Honey, not when you're trying to move forward. When you're trying to move forward in life, you don't need nobody trying to push you back. You need somebody to push you forward. What kind of people you got pushing you today? Who you got in your life that moves you forward? My God. We learned on last week that fear, fear in the desert, when that fear grasps you in the desert, it leads to failure to trust God. And when you stop trusting God, you start making bad choices in your life. Don't let fear control you 
in your desert experience. You got to rebuke that thing. Yes. Hallelujah. And give control over to Jesus Christ. It's all about how you handle your desert experience. I want you to remember that today. It's how you handle your desert experience. We are going to go through a desert experience. You're going to have them. You can't escape them. You can't escape them. But it's how you handle them. My God. Are you murmuring like the children of Israel or the ten spies who saw their defeat and was filled with fear and, and could not even see beyond their own fleshly power, beyond their own knowledge or wisdom? Now, this is what I'm walking with God. God had been guiding them. Oh, man. Or, or are you like Caleb and Joshua? who trust in the Lord and, and did not lean unto their own understanding. They seen them same giants, but their thought pattern was, we can do this. Because see, in the back of their mind, well, must I, must I say, down in their heart and in their spirit, man, existed Jesus. See, they wasn't looking at the giants and saying my strength. They was looking at the giants and saying Jesus' strength. That's what you got to do. You can't, you can't look at the devil and talk about you going to defeat him. Because you can't. You can't defeat him. I'm, a, I'm just being real. You can't defeat him. But God. Oh my God. I, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Jesus. You man, with the power of God, you can do all things. Hallelujah. You can defeat any enemy in your path with Jesus on your side. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Or are you uh, uh, like Caleb and Joshua? Who's trusting in the Lord and, and did not lean unto their own understanding, but in all their ways, they acknowledge God. They acknowledge. You notice when them 10 spies, they came back and gave a report. There wasn't no acknowledgement of God nowhere about. But Caleb and, 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 and uh, Joshua said, We can do this by the help of the Lord. By the help of the Lord. Joshua and Caleb said that we can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Joshua and, and, and Caleb said in Matthew 19 and uh, 26, they said, but Jesus beheld them and said unto them, with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. This is, this is what I'm talking about. You can't have... Nobody's speaking negative around you. You got to have Caleb and Joshua with you. Follow more by You got to have those with you. My God. Joshua and Caleb says in Psalm 34 and 19, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Not some of them, but all of them. There is not a desert experience my Lord Jesus Christ can't deliver you or take you through. Amen. There is none. Amen. You can't let the circumstances of, of, of your desert experience take you over. You can't let you, you, you can't be like the ten spies and let fear grab you and take you over. You can't be like a, a, a let your desert experience have you so afraid that your own mouth and your own mind starts to bring and speak an evil report to your own soul. Hallelujah. Don't allow that. You ain't control of that. You ain't control of your mouth. Hallelujah. Don't allow your mouth to speak evil reports. You don't know what evil report is? Those negative things. Those I cannot do. Those things of of, 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 hallelujah, unrighteousness. 
that fear, those are, hallelujah, negative reports. Proverbs 15 and 30 says, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. Okay, now, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart. And a good report maketh the bones fat. But let me read this on in another hallelujah translation. So we can we can get a little maybe a little better understanding what I'm talking about. In the New Living Translation, it says, A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Don't walk around, hallelujah, with a pitiful look all the time. Hallelujah. Recruiting people for the pity party. Hallelujah. Put a smile on your face. Hallelujah. Put a smile on your face. They tell me that it takes less strength anyway to smile than it does to put that frown on. Hallelujah. You know, you got to say, I'm going to make it. <laughs> Even though I'm going through my deadly experience, put a smile on your face and say, I'm going to make it. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. This is the word of God. God is telling you, don't be walking around with a frown on your face. Amen. Looking all pitiful. Yeah. Even though you're going through, we all go through something. Yeah. Hallelujah. But what I said, it's how you handle it. Right. How you respond to your desert experience. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Then the scripture, it goes on to say, good news makes for good health. Yeah. <laughs> it says good news. Make, let, let me read this whole scripture over again. Put it together. A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Yeah. Good news makes for good health. Good news makes for good health. Check yourself. Hallelujah. Check that news you've been taking in. Mm. A bad report can kill you. And it will kill you if you let it. Ask the children of Israel that died in the desert uh, before making it to the promised land. Those that dropped off like carcasses. The word of God says that they died because they believed that bad report of the 10 spies and disobeyed God and did not go and take the promised land as God had told them to. Hallelujah. A bad report will kill you physically, mentally, and spiritually. It would have you where you would be saying the death of the experience is too much. It's too big for me. I can't handle it. I'm going to have to give up. Hallelujah. It would have you where you would be saying it's, a, it's swallowing me up. It feels like the whole world is against me. Now listen to what I'm saying now. We talking about that, that, that what happens when you, you listen to them bad reports. You remember the children in Israel. It, it says that, you know, you'll be saying that the whole world against me. Nothing I do turns out right. Tell me you ain't heard these things before. Nothing I do turns out right. I'm nothing but a failure. We are talking about a bad report, people. Speaking negative in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Speaking negative to yourself. Yeah. You will be saying, every which way I turn, there seems to be a wall blocking me in. Everyone is doing better than me. I am tired of living for the Lord. I'm, uh, I'm going to start just living for myself. Every time I take two steps forward, I get pushed back three. I'm tired of living through all of that. I'm just going to take my own life to show that I am in control. Listen, let me tell you something. If you're thinking this way, if this is your thought 
pattern? Is this is your conversation pattern? Then your pattern is of an evil report. Like the ten spies. Jesus, he, he finds this type of, uh, of speaking and thinking and, 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 and conversation offensive and rebellious. Not to mention evil. Hallelujah. This type of thinking, it causes you to remain or, or to get stuck in your current condition. It causes you to die in the desert like the rebellious and disobedient Israelites which God had said that their carcasses shall fall in the wilderness in the desert this is what God said and, and, and did after the children of Israel they refused to go in and take the promised land after being disobedient and, and rebellious uh, turn to Numbers uh, 14 Numbers chapter 14, and I'm going to start at verse 27. I'm going to read. Hallelujah. Now, what this is, is this is what God, hallelujah, had told those, the, the, the Israelites. And this is what happened with them after they refused to, after they had listened to those ten spies. And, and they didn't go in and take the land at once like Jacob and, and, and Joshua, uh, Caleb and Joshua had told them. So it starts at verse 27. He says, how long must I put up with this wicked? I'm reading from the New Translation Version. How long shall I put up with this wicked community and its complaints about me? Woo. You're talking about Jesus now. You're talking about God. About me. Complaining about God. He says, yes. I have heard their complaints. The, the Israelites are making, uh, I have heard the complaints that the Israelites are making against me. Now tell them this, as surely as I live, declared the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. You know, because there was a murmur and complaining. If, if, you, if you ever read the story, they was talking about, why you bring us out here, Moses? We should have died back in Egypt with, with some food in our mouths. You know, at least we was eating. You know, back into slavery. Why you bring us out here? We, we ain't got no water. We ain't got no food. And you're starving us to death. And then the giant's about to kill us over here. They were just murmuring and complaining all about it. And they said that we was going to die. We're going to die out here. So this is why God says, I will do the very thing I heard you say. So you need to watch what you're saying. Watch your mouth. I told you that words have power. They give life and they give death. They give life and they destroy. Speak life when you speak, not death. I'm telling you, the word of God, it stands to be true. You might think it's a simple thing. Yeah, you might think it's a simple thing. But keep speaking foolishness. And see how it rolls. See how it goes. The word of God, it goes on, starting at verse 29 again. It says, you will all drop dead in this wilderness. Because you complain against me. Every one of you who is 20 years old or older and was included in the registration will die. You will not enter and occupy the land I sworn to give you. The only exception, the only exception will be Caleb, hallelujah, uh, uh, Caleb's son of Jupiter and Joshua, son of Nun. The only exception. You know why? Because they had a good report. Yeah, yeah. They acknowledged God yeah. as they gave their report of the land. Oh my God. Listen, everyone is going to have to go through a desert experience. That's true. Don't die in your desert experience. Use it as a stepping stone. Yeah. 
Use it as training ground. Use it as a witnessing tool. Use it as a testimony. David had a lot of desert experience time hiding out from Saul. Hallelujah. Before he was made king. Before he actually stepped into that kingdomship. He was in the desert a whole lot running from Saul. Hallelujah. Job, he really had a desert experience. He lost everything, his kids and all his finances and everything he owned, almost lost his life. Yeah. His flesh was falling off his bones. Yeah. But yet, Job, he kept his faith in God. Yeah. He did not speak bad of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He kept his faith. His words was of a good report about God. Even about the situation. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Job was like, you know, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. Even when his wife came to him. Yeah. Just paraphrasing. He's, he's like, I'm going to be all right. Yeah. We're going to be all right. Yeah. He didn't, you know, his wife came to him with what? A negative report. Yeah. She yeah. told him to curse God yeah. and die. Yeah. Now how much more negative of a report <laughs> can you get? He had to rebuke that thing. I shall not die. I shall live and declare the wonderful works of my Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Don't let nobody come to you and tell you you can't make it. That you can't do this in the name of Jesus and you can't do that in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, you got the help of God, you can do it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul had his desert experience that changed his actual belief in Jesus Christ. Listen, even Jesus had to have a desert experience. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus himself, hallelujah, in Luke, hallelujah, chapter 4, and starting at verse 1, it says, And Jesus being filled with the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Now, if you don't know what a wilderness is, it's a desert. Amen. Uh, it said, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterwards hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, Command these stones that they be made bread. You see, when, when, you, when you're going through your desert experience, the devil wants you to satisfy the hunger of your flesh yeah. or the lust of your flesh. Oh, Those things that please you and not the will of God. Yeah. The devil will come to you. He'll be like, do this and do that. Uh, he, you know, because he'll be telling you something that's going to please your flesh. Yeah. He, he'll be telling you, don't come to church. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah, you're tired. And, 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 you know, that's what he'll tell you. You don't work this and that. Don't go to church. And you know you got an excuse. Hallelujah. But you got to say, uh uh, devil. You're a liar. Hallelujah. I shall go and worship the Lord. Luke 4 and 4 goes on to say, And Jesus answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, yeah. but every word of God. <laughs> when you're living by the word of God, you are living by the will of God. Yeah. Because the word of God is Jesus, yeah. our God himself. Yeah. Hallelujah. Listen, man can't live, hallelujah, on physical bread alone. <laughs> That only, hallelujah, bread, it only feeds the flesh. Uh, hallelujah. But you must also feed your spirit man. Uh, now, how does your spirit man eat? Uh, whatever you place in front of you, uh, that's how your spirit man eats. Uh, hallelujah. Whatever coming through your senses, uh, whatever coming through your eye gate, uh, whatever coming through your ear gate, uh, Whatever goes out of your mouth gate, yeah, uh, yeah. these things uh, feeds, uh, hallelujah, the spirit man. Right, yeah. Now the spirit man is going to grow. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Now, depending on what you feed the spirit, man, that's the way he's going to grow up. He's going to grow up to be evil because you're looking and, 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 and talking evil and, and hallelujah and hearing and listening to evil stuff. So your spirit, man, is going to grow up to, to be evil or he's going to grow up to be righteous because you're listening to the word of God. You're listening to a common conversation, yeah, yeah. a good conversation. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Hallelujah. How are you feeding your spiritual man? Yeah. Are you feeding him foolishness? Or are you feeding him righteousness? Yeah. Hallelujah. How are you feeding your uh, spiritual man? Yeah. Don't let him starve to death. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Luke 4 and 5 goes on to say, and the devil uh, taking him up into a high mountain, uh, showing unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Uh, and the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. Uh, see, he like that type of stuff. Yeah. And for that, uh, you will never hear the Lord talk about power like that, you know, the, in, in a bright, docious manner. Right. But anyway, and the devil uh, uh, said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them. Of them. For that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all, hallelujah, shall be thine. In other words, he told Jesus, man, I give you all of this. I mean, he should already know. He already owned all of it. But anyway, <laughs> he must have had a lapse in, in, in his mind when he was up in heaven. <laughs> that Jesus, uh, he already owned everything. <laughs> it's all his. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but, but you know, that's kind of like you got a car and somebody say, I, I, I'll say this. It's my car. <laughs> How you going to sell me my car? But anyway, hallelujah. The devil is going to come to you in your desert experience uh, just like he came uh, unto Jesus. Uh, you're not going to escape him. Uh, he came to Jesus in Jesus' desert experience. Uh, you think you're not going to have a desert experience? And then you think Satan is not going to come to you in your desert experience? He did Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. Jesus had to have a desert experience, uh, and then the devil uh, came to him even in his desert experience. Uh, the devil wants you to lust after everything in the world yeah. mm, that your eyes see. He wants you to see yourself in control of everybody uh, and everything uh, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to control everybody and everything. The devil wants you to be in a place where you will serve and worship him. Now, if you really think that, if you think like that, uh, like the devil, uh, you're going to end up like the devil uh, with a confirmed reservation in hell. That's where you're going to end up if you're thinking like the devil. If you're thinking like that, uh, you know, he got, he got a reservation in hell. Already it's confirmed. Hallelujah. But you got to stand up straight in the middle of your desert experience and tell the devil that what Jesus told him. Which was the word of God. Hallelujah. For uh, Luke 4 and 8 goes on to say, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou worship. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Now listen, listen. let me, let me pause right here for a second. Look at the devil. He's trying to throw some word yeah. on Jesus. <laughs> Just like word. Jesus was putting that word on him. Yeah. He's trying to throw it on Jesus yeah. now. Yeah. He's he talking about, for it is written. Yeah. He shall give his angels charge over thee. Oh. He did that same trick with Eve. Yeah. That's right. 
Did he really say? And then he repeated the scripture. Listen, this is why you have to be in the word of God. Because the devil, he'll come to you with the word. But then he'll twist it all up. You got to be in the word. You can't just be light again. The devil will take you over. He will kill you in your desert experience. Hallelujah. You can't be playing with the devil. Huh? You ain't got no time, hallelujah, to be on the sideline. <laughs> you need to be in your word. Studying your word. You need to be with Jesus, hallelujah. It goes on to say in verse 11, man. And in their hand they shall bear thee up. At uh, least at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said unto him, It, hallelujah, is said that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. See, he put that word right back on it. He didn't veer from it. Even though, even though, even, even though, even though the devil came with the word also, Jesus. Uh -oh, he put that word right back on it. See, because there's no confusion in God. I don't know why people are always trying to make the word of God so complicated. It's not that complicated. It's only complicated because we, we complicate it. The word of God is not complicated. It's all about your belief. It's all about do you believe it? See, when you don't believe it, and when it don't line up with what you trying to do, then all of a sudden it becomes complicated. And then you want to adjust it. You want to adjust it and twist it to fit whatever it is that you trying to accomplish. We ain't talking about what you trying to accomplish in God either. We talking about what you trying to accomplish. Hallelujah, you want to twist it around. But in the name of Jesus, that's, that's what the devil do. See, that's where you don't understand. You be operating in the devil's place. Because the devil is the one that be twisting the word of God. Hallelujah. Stop twisting that word of God. Let it be what it is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The devil, hallelujah, he wants to, he wants you to think that, that you can't go through your desert experience. He, he, he wants you to think that you can go through however you want to go through doing whatever you want to do, saying whatever you want to say. Hallelujah. He, he, he wants to let you know, you know, that, that when you do that, how you walk, how you walk in your, in your desert experience and you ain't thinking nothing about God. See, he want to, he want, he want you to think that God is going to co-sign off on that. See, he, he, he because see, he sets you up like that. That's what he did with the children of Israel. Hallelujah. My God, let, let, let's move on. Oh, what pride you have in your life if you think that you can act any kind of way that you want. You will end up like the children of Israel dropping dead in the middle of your, hallelujah, huh, desert experience. I suggest uh, you tell that devil uh, what Jesus told him, huh, which is the word of God. Thou shall not tempt, hallelujah, huh, the Lord thy God. <laughs> this is what we should do when we get weak in the middle of your desert experience. Huh. We should speak the word of God huh, in your desert experience. Huh. Do what Jesus did, huh. hallelujah. In, in, in 1 John 4 and 4, he said, uh, huh, Ye are, 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 are of God, little children, eh? and have overcome them. Eh? Because greater is he, hallelujah, that's in you, than he that is in God. Eh? Uh, speak the word when the devil is messing with you in your, in, in, in your hallelujah, desert experience. Eh? Proverbs 18 and 21 says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and, and they that love it, eh? shall eat the fruit thereof. Yeah, yeah. They that love it. Love it. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. You got to, hallelujah, stay. Hallelujah, you got to say, I shall live and not die. I shall declare the wonderful works of the Lord God. 
speak the word. <laughs> like that word of Jeremiah 29 and 11. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of hallelujah, of peace, thoughts and not of evil, to give you what? An expected end. That's what the Lord is saying. Hallelujah. And then he said, then shall you call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. See what happens uh, in your desert experience uh, when, when, when you start speaking that word. Uh, he said that you will call upon him. And he said, I'll answer you. Yeah. He said, I'll hearken unto you. Yeah. I'll come to you uh, in your dry place. Uh, I'll come to you uh, when you're thirsty. Uh, I'll come to you. Uh, hallelujah. That's my Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. He, and he said, uh, and ye shall seek me. Uh, I'll Seek me, yes. seek me, yes. hallelujah, and find me. Yes. If you seek him, you shall find him, yes. hallelujah. But he says at the end, hallelujah, he says, if you search for me with all your heart, yes. hallelujah, with all your heart, yes. hallelujah, you have to seek after God. It just ain't no game, hallelujah. If you want to be with Jesus, uh, you got to seek after him. Hallelujah. Yeah. The devil is the one that plays that pity pack. Uh, yeah. Jesus don't play no pity pack. Uh, Jesus is serious. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, thank you, God. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, listen. Uh, listen. I say again unto you, a bad report. This is something that I mentioned earlier in the message. I want you to listen to it. Uh, a bad report will kill you. Yeah. It will kill you physically, mentally, and spiritually. If you have, hallelujah, it, it will have you uh, uh, saying, this desert experience is too much, and, and it's too big, and, it, and it, it'll have you saying, uh, it's swallowing me up. It feels like the whole world is against me. Nothing to, uh, 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 nothing I turn to, hallelujah, can help me. Uh, Nothing that I do turns out right. Uh, I'm nothing but a failure. Uh, now we're talking about that desert experience and a bad report. Uh, you said, hallelujah, uh, every which way I turn, uh, it seems to be a wall that blocking me. Uh, everyone is doing uh, better than me. Uh, I'm trying to live for God. Uh, mm, I'm tired of living for God. Uh, wow. Hallelujah. Uh, I'm going to start just living for myself. Uh, oh, that sounds just like the devil, right? Uh, when he said, I, I, I shall rule. I, I shall be the top. I shall be the head. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, I just want to live for myself. Uh, every time I take, hallelujah, one, two step forward, uh, something that pushes me, one, two, three back. Uh, hallelujah. I can never get ahead. Uh, Hallelujah. I'm tired of living like this. I'm tired of this stuff. Hallelujah. I'm trying to, hallelujah, do what's right. But wrong just seem to be muscling me down. Hallelujah. I'm just going to take my own life. Hallelujah. But you know what? You got to get yourself together and say, I'm going to live and not die. I got to get you a good old song. Listen, watch that song right here. Listen at this song right here. Y'all are gonna live to see it happen. Has God promised you anything? Has God promised you anything? Y'all gonna live to see it happen. Hallelujah. Y'all gonna live. That's what you gotta say.
Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch the hearts right now, your people. Touch my heart, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Let that word work on the inside, God. Hallelujah, God. Draw them near, God. Bring them to the backside of the desert, God, so that you can talk to them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, empty them out, God, so that you can fill them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let them know, God, that they can live and not die. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, Father, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You shall live. Live, 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 live. Oh, yeah. Live, 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 live. My God. Thank you. Listen. I was a, anybody here who want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Anybody here who want to go down in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Come forth. Hallelujah. We got water. And God shall fill you with his Holy Ghost so that you can live. Live, 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 live. live. Uh, don't you want to live and not die? My God, thank you, Jesus. You're welcome to come forth. Hallelujah. You can come and see me or my wife. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We'll help you see the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's get a lot of hand. Thank you, Jesus. Live, 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 live.